Lesson 11.1 is systems of equations. Systems of equations are collections of two or more equations, each equation with at least one variable. Solutions to systems are values that are solutions to all of the equations in the system at the same time. We have three main methods to solve systems of equations, but two algebraic ones, substitution and elimination. We can also solve systems using graphing, but it becomes more complex as our systems become more complex. A consistent system is a system that has at least one solution and an independent set of equations or independent system has exactly one solution, whereas a dependent equations or dependent system has infinitely many solutions. An inconsistent system has no solutions at all. So if we look here, we have a consistent and independent system uh, of linear equations, so there's exactly one solution. A consistent and dependent, so they're on top of each other, so there's infinitely many sol solutions, and an inconsistent system, which for linear equations would be parallel lines, uh, because they never intersect, there's no solution. Here we have a system of two linear equations that we want to solve by substitution. So remember, when we solve by substitution, we solve for one of the variables in one of the equations and substitute into the other equation, solve for the remaining variable, and then plug that value into either of the original equations to solve for your other variable. So for this first one, the first equation has a y that doesn't have a coefficient. So I solved that equation for y, and I got y equals negative 2x minus 1. And then I'm going to substitute that in for y in the second equation because they're equivalencies. So I get negative 4x plus 6 times the quantity negative 2x minus 1 equals 42. So now I'm going to solve for x. So I distributed in the 6, and then I solved for x, so I got x to be negative 3. So now because this is going to be a solution to both of the two equations, it doesn't matter which equation I plug the x equals negative 3 into to solve for y. Since this is already solved for y, I'm going to plug it into this one up here. So I plugged in negative 3 for x, and I got y to be 5. Since this is a system of linear equations with no context, the solution is the coordinate of the point where these two would intersect. So my answer is going to be the coordinate point negative 3 comma 5. The other algebraic method we have for solving a system of equations is by elimination. So for elimination, we have three rules. You can interchange any two equations, which basically just means rewrite them in a different order. Uh, you can multiply or divide each side in an equation by a non-zero constant. Multiply or divide, not add or subtract. And you can replace any equation in the system by the sum or difference of that equation and a non-zero multiple of another equation. So basically, you can multiply one equation by something and add it to another, add it to the other equation, and that is a new equation that is still part of your system. So your goal when you're solving with elimination is to get one pair of coefficients to be opposites of each other. So you get either the x's or the y's to be opposites, and then you can add the two equations together, which will eliminate one of your variables. You can solve for the remaining variable and then plug that back in. So for this first one, I noticed that x already has an opposite sign, so I'm going to multiply the whole bottom equation by a 2. So I'm using this second rule here. So I get negative 2x plus 2y is equal to negative 6. And then I'm going to add the original first equation to this new second equation. And basically, I'm doing rule number 3. So I'm adding the two together and replacing that equation with this new equation. So that x is eliminated, and I got 5y equals negative 5. And so I got y equals negative 1. So now I can take this just like substitution, substitute it into either the two original equations, and solve for my x-coordinate. So I plugged in my negative 1 into the second equation just because it didn't have any coefficients. So I get negative x plus negative 1 is equal to negative 3. So negative x equals negative 2 or x equals 2. So again, because this is a system of just linear equations with no context, my solution is just the coordinate point 2 comma negative 1. So now we have another system, 2x plus y is equal to 5 and 4x plus 2y is equal to 8. So solve this system using whatever method you want. I chose to do elimination. I multiplied the top equation by a negative 2 to eliminate my y's here. So I get negative 4x minus 2y is equal to negative 10. And I added that to the 4x plus 2y equals 8. And I noticed that both my x's and my y's cancel. So I end up with 0 on the left side is equal to negative 2. 0 does not equal negative 2. That's not possible. So this is no solution. In this case, these are parallel lines. So they will never intersect. So this is our inconsistent system. Whenever you solve a system of equations and all of your variables eliminate and you end up with a not true statement like 0 is equal to negative 2, 
that is your no solution. Those were parallel lines, so they'll never intersect. If you end up with a true statement and all of your variables have eliminated, like zero equals zero, that is your dependent equations. That's your infinitely many solutions. A restaurant manager wants to purchase 200 sets of dishes. One design costs $25 per set and another costs $45 per set. If she only has $7,400 to spend, how many sets of each design should she order? So set up a system of equations and solve this system to figure out how many of each type of plate she should order. The two equations I've set up are x plus y is equal to 200 and 25x plus 45y equals 7400, where x is the number of the first design and y is the number of the second design. So she wants a total of 200, so adding them up, how many of the first plus how many of the second has to equal 200, and then the costs have to add up to 7400, so 25 times how many she buys of the first one and 45 times how many she buys of the second one. So now I have my system, I can go ahead and solve the system. So I have my system, I chose to solve by elimination, I multiplied the top equation by a negative 25 to eliminate my x's, so I get negative 25x minus 25y equals negative 5,000, I add them together, the x's canceled, I got 20y plus, uh, equals 2400, so y is equal to 120, and then I plug that into the first equation, got x plus 120 equals 200, so x is equal to 80. So she should buy 80 of the $25 sets and 120 of the $45 sets. We can also look at systems of three equations where these are either planes or three-dimensional lines that we're looking at. Um, and it's the same idea. So we can have a consistent independent system where we have exactly one solution. We can have a consistent dependent system where we have infinitely many solutions. So either the planes are sitting on top of each other or they're intersecting in such a way that they'll intersect at a line. Or we can have inconsistent systems where we have no solutions, so either parallel planes or planes where only two of them intersect but not all three. The way that we solve systems of three equations is we pick two different pairs of equations to eliminate the same variable from. So that will create a system of two equations that we can then solve the way that we've done before. And then we take both of those values and plug them into any of the three original equations to solve for your third variable. So again, the first thing you want to do is pick one variable to eliminate from two different pairs. Um, sometimes there's an easiest, sometimes not, just like regular. Um, I'm going to choose y just because this one's already an opposite sign, but it's pretty easy. So I'm going to first look at equations 1 and 2 and eliminate y from those two equations. So I multiplied the first equation by 3 and got 3x plus 3y minus 3z is equal to negative 3 and added that to the original second equation. So my y is eliminated and I was left with 7x minus z is equal to 13. So now I'm going to look at equation 1 and equation 3 and eliminate y from that as well. I multiplied the top equation again by 2 this time, so I got 2x plus 2y minus 2z is equal to negative 2, and I added it to the original equation number 3, 2x minus 2y minus 3z equals 5. So again, the y's eliminated, I ended up with 4x minus 5z is equal to 3. So now, if I look at this pink equation, 4x minus 5z, 5z equals 3, and this purple equation, 7x minus z is equal to 13, I have a system of two equations. So I'm going to solve that new system for x and z, just like we were solving our previous system of two equations. I chose to solve this using elimination, so I multiplied the purple equation by a negative 5 and got negative 35x plus 5z is equal to negative 65 and added that to the 4x minus 5z is equal to 3. So my z's canceled and I ended up with negative 31x minus 62, divided both sides by negative 31 and I got x to be equal to 2. So then I plugged it into this equation and solved for z, so I got 14 minus z is equal to 13, so z is equal to 1. So now I have x and I have z, and I can plug it into any of the three original equations and solve for y. I chose the first equation because there's no coefficients, so I have uh, 2 plus y minus 1 is equal to negative 1, so y equals negative 2. And then just like when you have a system of two equations with no context, your answer is a coordinate pair. Same idea with three-dimensional, your answer is still a coordinate, in this case triple, so we always answer it as x y, z. So always in the same order, so x, y, and then we just add our z coordinate on to the end. 
So when you're solving a system of three equations, you pick two pairs of equations to eliminate the same variable from. It has to be the same variable. You can't eliminate x from one and y from the other. It has to be the same variable. So that you end up with a system of two equations, solve that system for your two remaining variables, and then plug it back into one of the original equations to solve for your third variable. Here we have another system of three equations, so go ahead and pause the video and solve this system. On this one, I chose to eliminate variable z from equations 1 and 3 and 2 and 3. So I added equations 1 and 3 together and I got 3x minus 3y equals negative 1 and I added equations 2 and 3 together and I got 2x minus 2y equals negative 8 and the z's cancelled on both of those. On this equation I simplified it by just dividing everything by 2 so I got x minus y is equal to negative 4. So now I have a system of two equations with this green equation and this purple equation and I chose to solve that with elimination so I multiplied that equation by a negative 3 to cancel out my y's and so I got negative 3x plus 3y is equal to 12 and then I added them together and in this case both the x's and the y's cancelled and I ended up with 0 is equal to 11. And this is what we talked about earlier where all of your variables cancelled off and you ended up with a not true statement so that means that this has no solution. Here is another system of three equations, so go ahead and pause the video and solve this one. So I did the same thing. I decided to eliminate z from two different pairs of equations, equations 1 and 2 and 1 and 3. So 1 and 2, I just added them together and I got 3x minus 5y equals 31 and the z's cancel. For 1 and 3, I multiplied equation 1 by 5 and got 5x minus 10y minus 5z is equal to 40 and then added it to equation 3 and got 9x minus 15y equals 93, which I then divided everything by 3 just to simplify it and got 3x minus 5y equals 31. So now I have a system of two equations with just x and y and I multiplied this green equation by a negative 1 to get negative 3x plus 5y is equal to negative 31 and when I added these together everything cancelled. So my variables cancelled and I ended up with a true statement 0 equals 0. So that is our infinitely many solutions. However, it's not good enough anymore just to say infinitely many solutions because it's not all the points in the entire plane. There's a pattern to the point. So if we look, think back to that visual that we saw, it's either the entire plane or that line where they all intersect. So we want to write our coordinate triple as a pattern of coordinates instead of it's not going to be one specific coordinate, but we want to be more specific than just infinitely many solutions. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to start with this equation in two variables. So they're the same equation, that's why everything cancelled. And so we're going to write this equation in terms of one of the variables. So essentially we're going to pick one variable to write all of our other variables in terms of. So I'm going to solve this equation for y so I get it in terms of x. So when I solve this thing for y, I got y equals 3 fifths x minus 31 over 5. So this means that our x value, we can pick any value in the real numbers for x. But once we pick x, y and z are limited to what falls in the pattern of either that plane or that line. So in this case, once we pick x, y has to be 3 fifths x minus 31 over 5. There's no other option for it. So now we're going to do the same thing. Just like if we had numbers for x and y, we're going to plug these into one of the three original equations and solve for z. z is just not going to be a number. It's going to be an expression in terms of x. So I'm going to take x and y, which is 3 fifths x minus 31 over 5, and plug it into this top equation and solve for z. I took this top equation and I x is just x, and then y is 3 fifths x minus 31 over 5, and I'm going to solve this for z. So I distributed it in the negative 2, and I combined like terms, and I got z is equal to negative 1 fifth x plus 22 over 5. So now I have this coordinate triple, just like if they were numbers, except for x can be anything in the real plane, and then y would be 3 fifths times whatever x is minus 31 over 5, and z would be negative 1 fifth times x plus 22 over 5. So from now on, whenever we have an infinitely many solutions, we want to take it a step further and write out what the pattern of the coordinate triples are going to be. We want a quadratic equation, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, whose graph passes through the points negative 1, negative 2, 1, negative 4, and 2, 4. When we talk about graphs passing through points, remember it means that those points make the equation true. So use these points to help us set up a system to solve for a, b, and c. 
I plugged in each of these points for x and y and then simplified. So when I plugged in negative 1 for x and negative 2 for y, I end up with negative 2 equals a minus b plus c. When I plugged in 1, negative 4, I ended up with negative 4 equals a plus b plus c. And when I plugged in 2, 4, I ended up with 4 equals 4a plus 2b plus c. So now I have a system of three equations with three unknowns. So go ahead and pause the video and solve this for a, b, and c. I chose to eliminate c, so I multiplied the first equation by a negative 1 and added it to the second equation. So I get 2 is equal to negative a plus b minus c. And when I added it to the second equation, it actually eliminated a and c, so I ended up with negative 2 is equal to 2b, or b is equal to negative 1. I also multiplied the top equation by a negative 1 and added it to the third equation. And so I got 2 equals negative a plus b minus c and added that to 4 equals 4a plus 2b plus c and got 6 is equal to 3a plus 3b. I divided everything by 3 and got 2 equals a plus b. Since this one already had just b equals negative 1, I just plugged that in over here and I got a to be 3. I then took a to be 3 and b to be negative 1 and plugged it into the second equation and solved for c and got c is equal to negative 6. So I end up with the quadratic equation y equals 3x squared minus x minus 6. So we have substitution and elimination methods to solve systems of linear equations. And when we want to solve a system of three linear equations, we eliminate the same variable from two different pairs of equations, which gives us a system of two equations to then solve and then solve for your third variable.